Hey folks, Dr. Mike Hotel here for Renaissance Periodization, Chapter 3 of the RP Diet Book 2.0, Macronutrients. If you want any more details than we cover in this short YouTube video, the book link is below. We've got scientific references. Chapters are massive here. All the intricacies are discussed. We're just going to do a real quick overview here. Macronutrients. Three macros, proteins, carbs, and fats. We're going to talk about their functions, what we need them for, and uh, rough recommendations for intake for performance and body composition. Before that, we have to talk about something that we have termed the caloric constraint hypothesis. It, you know, not much of a hypothesis, more like a postulate, but here's the deal. We see a lot of recommendations for how much carbohydrate you're supposed to have, how much fat you're supposed to have, how much protein you're supposed to have. And a lot of these values come in percentages, and some of them come in uh, gram values, like grams per pound. Some of them come in absolute values. You'll see people saying, well, you need 25 grams of protein per meal to do this and that. Here's the fundamental reality we have to keep in mind when we're thinking, okay, how much protein, carbs, and fats should I eat? All of it is constrained by calories. Because calories are more important than macros, they have to be set in stone before you start choosing your macros. So the first thing you do when making a diet plan is you choose your calories, right? logically. Once you know how many calories you have, proteins, carbs, and fats fill those calories up, you know, those, the calorie allotment up with their individual calories. Proteins and carbs have four calories per gram. Fats have nine calories per gram. So when someone says you need to up your protein, Unless they're also saying you need to increase your calories, which remember, you should have already set your calories in stone, they're necessarily saying you have to lower your carbs, your fats, or both. There's no way to change one of those nutrients without changing the others unless you mess with your calories, and you shouldn't be because those should be decided beforehand. So for example, if you're eating for maintenance, you just want to maintain your body weight and have high performance, maybe your maintenance is around 3,000 calories. Once 3,000 is set, Whatever amount of protein you eat, if you eat too much, you have to have less carbs or less fats. There's no way to go about it any other way. So whenever we look at these recommendations, just keep in mind that the answer is never an infinity <laughs> of any one of these nutrients. Why are we saying this? People say, you know, how much protein should I eat? And say as much as you can, brother. They're literally saying that you should eat as little carbohydrate and fat as possible. And that's insane. You're trying to gain muscle. That's not going to work. You're going to get too little fat to support hormonal functions. You're going to get too little carbs to train super well, and that's going to be really, really crap. Or say, hey, I need more energy. What do I do? Eat as much carb as you can. Well, geez, that's going to push out protein and fat. Everything has to occur in the context of everything else. So let's go through each of one of these macronutrients. Let's figure out their functions and figure out a reasonable amount of them to take in based on goals, so on and so forth, so that there's enough of the nutrient to do whatever we need it to do and enough room for all the others. So first up is protein. It's first up because it's the most important to body composition and performance. There is an argument in endurance performance and in high output performance that carbohydrate is at least as important and maybe more so, but because this is sort of an average look, body composition plus performance for all the sports, protein is certainly predominant. Why is it predominant? What does it do? Protein physically composes most of the dry weight of your muscle tissue, right? So muscle is made of protein fundamentally. And protein also is what, or amino acids that the protein is broken down into, is what composes the proteins in your body, which are all of the molecular machines that literally make and keep you alive. In all of you right now, unless you're androids, then don't listen to this next part, there is a sodium-potassium pump that maintains the electrical potential between outside and inside of your cells, including your nerve cells. That particular protein is always working. If you didn't have it, it wouldn't work. Your nerves would become dead and you would legitimately just die right on the spot. So not only are your nerves pretty much made of proteins, the machines inside of them that let them work, the machines that physically contract muscle are all proteins. Kind of important. So protein we need to take in enough of every day because our machines break down, wear down, they're replaced, and they always need raw materials, right? Where does that leave us as far as recommendations for protein? Well, we have different purposes in different ranges. The average is about close to a gram per pound of protein per day. That might not be as much of an average as it is an optimum value in most cases. 
especially if body composition is a concern, and many kinds of performance as well. Now, if you're an endurance athlete, uh, if you're a recreational athlete of any other kind that doesn't want to be super jacked, you can actually eat considerably less protein and be just fine. And in some cases, maybe if you're dieting on super low calories, you want an anti-hunger effect, a little bit more protein is a good idea. But if you shoot for that gram per pound, it gets you right into the mix of things real close to, to ideal in many, many cases. If you want to know about where and how and when those things change, check out the book that's linked right below. Carbs are next up. Second, most important, the biggest thing carbs do is provide us energy for training and exercise and sport performance. Carbs are an unrivaled fuel for high intensity repeat performance. So if you're moving, if you're loading stones, if you're doing clean and jerks, if you're shooting basketballs and running around, carbs are the dominant fuel source, period. So we're going to want enough of them to make sure that we can be active throughout the day because we burn carbs doing that and perform at our chosen training or our chosen sport. When you take all those things into consideration, we actually have a huge variance in carbohydrate intake as a minimum amounts. If you're not super duper active, then you could actually get away with eating like a gram of carbohydrates per pound of body weight a day. So if you weigh 200 pounds, which is quite a bit, Maybe you can only eat 200 grams a day on average and be totally fine and meet all of your energy needs. But if you're super duper active, you can be up to three, even four grams per pound a day. A same person who weighs 200 pounds, if they're an ultra endurance athlete or a cyclist, can eat up to 800 grams of carbs every single day. And only that, and you know, at least that, is going to meet all their energy demands. So the way to determine protein is basically off body weight and a little bit of goal. The way to determine carbs is how much activity you're doing. And for details on that, we're going to look right to the book. What about fats? Fats don't have a super major kind of uh, center center field role in sport nutrition. Um, you know, they are mostly supporting players. That's not to say they're not important, however. Fats support hormonal profiles, they generate a lot of structures, and they're absolutely essential to take. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a group of fats called essential fats, which your body physically can't manufacture itself. You cannot have a fat-free diet. So fats are mostly looked at as minimums of intake, not optimum intake or not intake reference to activity. There's a minimum intake that most folks need for their body weight. And anything above that is totally cool if you want to eat more fats and less carbs for any number of reasons, but you need at least roughly 0.6 grams of fat uh, per kilo or 0.3 per pound, right, or right around there, uh, very, very uh, minor differences. So for example, 0.3 per pound, that means if you weigh 200 pounds, you need about 60 grams of fat at least to guarantee that you're getting all those good things from fats that you're supposed to be hormonal support, structural support, essential nutrition, so on and so forth, to stay healthy, to stay upright, and to stay at your peak performance and body composition. Can you cut fats lower than that in some cases? Yes. Is it going to pan out well for you in all of them? No, we can't promise that. And too low of fats results in really crappy energy, poor hormones, muscle loss, nasty performance, higher chance of injury. So, you know, 0.3 and above, and you're good to go, how high can you go? You can go pretty high and still be healthy and perform well. You're just going to have to cut into carbs at some point. You'll pay for that, right? And definitely cut into protein. You'll pay for that too. It's probably a good idea to keep fats relatively in check, somewhere between 0.6 and 1.0 grams per pound, uh, or sorry, 0.3 and uh, you know, 0.5 grams per pound or something like that. And then you can play with that number to see what suits you best. So, so there's the recommendations for fats. How much, lastly, do macros matter in the context of things? Well, our diet priority pyramid assigns them roughly 30% of the total effect of dieting. That's a big deal. Now, it's not as big of a deal as calories. Okay, if you have a diet, you're trying to lose weight. There's no amount of fiddling with macros that you're going to be able to do and beat out the fat loss results that you'd get with just cutting calories. It's just not going to happen. If you're trying to gain muscle and you're not altering your calories, there's only so much you can do It's going to affect your muscle gains if you alter your macros, now, it could be a considerable amount. If you up your protein and carbs by a lot and drop your fats relative to what you used to be eating, you can gain quite a bit of muscle doing that, but it's not going to have the power behind it of calories. That being said, it's still very important. And the two of them together, macros and calories, are actually a really big deal. If it fits your macros, is a sort of dieting heuristic that can say, look, if you get your right calories in 
and the right amount of uh, macros and you don't eat just totally ridiculous food, you stay mostly healthy and have just sensible, normal timing, that you're gonna get a lot out of your diet. And really, even if you mess up a lot of those other things, if you get your calories and macros, that's almost 80% of the total effect of diet. So if you want two numbers to look at, get your calories right, get your macros right. Don't royally mess up anything else, just keep the basics in play and you're well off to a really good diet. But if you want a little bit more of an edge, you're gonna to have to look at nutrient timing, which is our next chapter. I'll see you then.